Hey parents, Mr. C from the Raspberry Pi Foundation here again. Now, I love Scratch, uh, and I know lots of young people do too. It's a really awesome way to get young people started in coding without having to learn how to type quickly or worry about grammatical errors and things like that. But if you've been doing a lot of coding over the last few months, then maybe your young people are starting to get to the point where they're looking for something a little bit more complex and a little bit more forward thinking and engaging to work with. Maybe you've worked through all of the projects on the Raspberry Pi site, or maybe they're just doing so many similar kinds of projects that they're starting to get a little bit bored with what Scratch can offer them. This video will give you some inspiration and ideas on how to take them forward with using Scratch without having to make that big leap into textual coding with Python or HTML. While many young people think that Scratch is just for beginners or babies, that is 100% not true. I still love to make projects in Scratch, and you can go and have a look at all the shared projects I've got on my account on the Scratch website if you want to have a look at something a bit more complicated. There are a few different things on there, starting with things like Flappy Bird to Temple Run. I've even made sort of a Mortal Kombat style two-player fighting game out of Scratch before. Uh, it's a really fun way to play around with concepts and things in programming without having to go all the way and learn the technical jargon involved with writing complicated things in Python or Java or HTML. But Maybe your young people are starting to think that it's too simple, it's too easy, and it's very babyish. Now, that's not true. There are loads of projects on the Scratch website that you can use to intrigue them and inspire them to make things that are way more complicated than the stuff that they're used to. For example, someone on Scratch has made Fortnite Z, uh, which is some amazing project that they've done there. It's like a top-down sort of running around shooting game. If your kids are into Fortnite, show them Fortnite Z, and you can see the link here in that video. That took 13,500 scratch blocks and four months of development to produce. So it's not a really simple knock-up project. It took somebody a long time and a lot of dedication to make a game as complex as Fortnite Z. There's also some 3D graphics projects that you can have a look at in Scratch. People have actually made things where you can swivel sort of different 3D models all around inside the Scratch workspace. And you can have a look at some really awesome things they've done there. And there's also a version of Dobble. If you haven't played the card game Dobble, it's very simple. You have all these different cards with lots of different symbols and you have to quickly, as you can, match the symbol on your card to the symbol on another card. And somebody made that in Scratch. It's a really fun game to play. Have a go at and try and emulate with your young people. Remember that Scratch is really about building programming concepts without having to worry about the jargon, the typing, and getting every dot and capital letter in the right place before you can make something that's quite interesting and fun to interact with. So have a go at those. Have a look at the projects on the site to encourage your children to do some more things and start moving towards the more complicated projects on the Raspberry Pi project site. If you're looking for more uh, information on those sorts of projects, you can go through Scratch and do a search for interesting things. There is even a special studio on Scratch which encourages children to have a look at all the more complex projects. So what can we as parents do with our young people to have them go back and get more intrigued with Scratch again? So the first thing I would say is go back over your old projects and try and add new features to them. So maybe you've got an old game that you made and it keeps track of the score, but what else could you do to that game to make it more intriguing, more interesting, more compelling for your player? Maybe you could add a timer, maybe you could add a second player, maybe you could add a splash screen or some different kinds of control mechanisms to that game that would make it a bit more interesting and brush up on those basic technical skills that you want. The second thing you could do is ask them to start from a completely blank canvas. So come up with an idea of a project or a game that you would like to make, make it very personal to you, and then try and reverse engineer that game back into its concepts and build it from the ground up. This asks young people to go back over all the other projects they've done in the past and try and remember the different techniques, skills, and tools that they've built up over this time in order to try and make something brand new, something completely personal and interesting to them. The other thing we can do is ask children to go back onto Scratch and have a look at tutorials for the more complex projects that they want to try and build. So you can have a look at some different things on YouTube. There are videos on digital making at home that show you some of the more complicated techniques you can use to build things in Scratch and emulate other people's projects. Go and have a look inside the projects that you think are really cool and see how they built the things that they did and try and copy those in your own projects. So rather than following my instructions on digital making at home or the instructions on the project site, see if you can take some else's already built work that you like and reverse engineer that. That's another really great way to get inside Scratch and understand the programming concepts it's trying to teach you without having to follow the sort of staid step-by-step -step instructions, which is maybe what they're actually tired with. Not being able to have that freedom and the creativity to express themselves in Scratch using their own internal knowledge, they're being asked to follow steps and make a thing that somebody else has already made. 
Asking them to be more creative, more open-minded, and build things from the blocks they already have at their disposal will refresh their interest in Scratch. So I hope this video has been helpful with you if your young people are starting to find themselves a bit bored or a bit stuck with Scratch and wanting to go somewhere new. There are a bunch of other resources you can get your hands on. I recommend going and checking out the Elaborate Project Studio on the Scratch website, filled with amazing inspirational things that really hardcore programmers have put together in Scratch, just to prove that it's not just for little kids and beginners. There are some amazing things that we've talked about in this video previously you can go have a look at. I also recommend you follow our Digital Making at Home series, which has some really cool projects and the live stream that we do each week where we bring young people on and they throw us curveballs and we try and work through building a thing that they've asked us to do on the spot. There's some really great ways to look at debugging and coming up with concepts in Scratch in those videos. And as always, sign up to the Parents Newsletter where we're continuing to produce content every week that you can log on, have a look at, that will help you extend your young people and give you that sort of support you're looking for as we're all learning from home at the moment. So thanks for watching in everybody. Keep following us. Make sure you get those resources from the other parts of the Raspberry Pi Foundation and keep making awesome stuff. Catch you later. Bye.